thank you guys so much for joining me today. I am really excited about my next guest. We actually got connected through Facebook some time ago, and we are glad to be connected today. It is Benita. Benita is here today to share her insight and wisdom, and we even found out that we're in the same area. You know, I'm in Stockbridge. She's in Fairburn, which is in Georgia. So we're not very far from each other. So this is really a great opportunity for us to connect, listen to her wisdom and insight, especially now during this time, because we have so many people that are in this space of, you know, we're dealing with these elections, racial tensions, and just the economy. I mean, the list can go on and on about the negatives, but we are here to talk about the good things, about how we can move forward, how we can manifest the things that we want for 2021. So at this time, I want to introduce Benita to everybody and give her a few minutes to tell us about herself before we get into the interview. All right. Well, Michelle, first of all, I just want to thank you so much for having me. For having me. Uh, after I remember us meeting a while back and we reconnected on LinkedIn. And I know you called yourself the super mom. And then when I looked you up, I was like, oh, wow. I could have used her when I was raising my kids. But how, <laughs> how are you doing, everybody? Uh, my name is Bonita White and I am a wife. I'm a mother of four young adults and I'm a businesswoman. And what I do, I'm a financial literacy coach. I help people get their credit and their finances together so that they can build wealth through home ownership as well as business ownership. And there's so many things that are based around credit, uh, financial literacy. I'm a former uh, science high school teacher. I taught uh, chemistry, biology, physics, all of that stuff. And I do know that financial literacy is something that is not being taught in the school system. So if you're not fortunate enough to get it at home, then a lot of us miss it. We go through our adulthood missing it. And then we make mistakes, financial mistakes. And myself included, um, this came out of uh, a lot of things I found out by trial and error, you know, years ago in the late 2008, <laughs> when I lost the house, <laughs> had to try to figure out how I was gonna rebuild my husband. He uh, had his first stroke, my husband's uh, handicapped now, he's in a wheelchair. But back in 2008, he had his first stroke and he was sick and out of work for a while. And even though I was working, you know, we kind of fell behind on the house mode and, Long story short, we lost the house and I had to rebuild from all of that. And I wish someone would have told me the financial principles that I know now. I had to figure that out. So when I found this platform a couple of years ago, I partnered with a company that's been around for 15 years and we teach financial literacy. And we have financial literacy services. We lead with credit because that's where a lot of people are, but it's more than just credit because your credit is a symptom of some other things that are not getting done as well. Amen. And, and as far as educating, I never knew the factors that affected my credit score. So when you know better, you do better. And the teacher in me birthed this whole movement to help and empower my community. So I'm I, just, I, I thank you so much for having me here so that I can share with others. This is so awesome. And I think this is really an appropriate time topic for such a time that we're in because we have many people who their income has decreased yeah. or, you know, they are saving money in some areas because they're working from home, you know, but then you have people who they've had family members that are unfortunate circumstances. So maybe they're moving in together or moving out or whatever the case is. So many different levels of financial situations going on that a lot of people don't anticipate. Even just for me, for example, we have our kids that are homeschooled. So yeah, we may be saving on um, 
clothing expenses and things like that. But hey, the food budget is going up. We all at home. Okay. So, you know, it's just one of those things. So, I guess the first thing I would say is what are some myths or some things that we get wrong when it comes to money management that we uh, need to start with? Well, I think the first thing is paying yourself first. Okay. Paying yourself first before you pay anybody. Paying yourself first. Mm -hmm. Establishing a budget. Mm -hmm. I tell people, you have to tell your money where to go Mm -hmm. and not wonder where it went. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) And when you don't have a budget, you know, you see people that get paid and they do this, they do that, do this, and then they look up and they don't have, they don't have no money. And right. now they got bills coming in because they they bought whatever, and, you know, and it's nothing wrong. I understand when you work hard, you want to do some things for yourself, but you have to put it in a budget and you have to have an emergency uh funds you know the same for rainy days now i know even if you had a thousand two three thousand dollars it might not have prepared you for what happened during this pandemic but the people that did have things in place um fared a little better just having your credit good credit i talk to people all the time they have equity in their house now well, if you don't have good credit, you can't pull out the equity that you have in your own house. Um, the importance of the proper type of life insurance. Some people have cash value in their life insurance they were able to tap into because during the good times, they invested in insurance. So these are the types of things that we need to be having a conversation about now. And lastly, uh, working from home, having a side hustle. You know, people thought, well, work from home, that's a scam. Well, it's not a scam no more. <laughs> no, Everybody hey. is <laughs> working from home. So true. That Those are some good things. Now, one of the things I want to go back to mm-hmm. is paying yourself first. You know, I, this is really, I love the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. I don't know if you've read that or not. <laughs> Okay, that's a good little quick read, but um, it talks about paying yourself first. So when you, and we got to get on the same page because, you know, you are literate about finances, but some of us watching, you know, we think, hey, paying ourselves, you know, how much should that be? And what are we doing with when when we're paying ourselves? Because some people be like, okay, I'm paying myself. Let me go out here and Go get this new uh, purse or get a new car that's out. You know what I'm saying? So tell us what we should be doing when you say pay yourself first. A a savings account. (laughs) Having money in the bank. Okay. Okay. Even if it's just $50 each pay period. Okay. $50 is not going to make you or break you. Mm -hmm. Okay. In most situations. And, And if you feel like it is, sometimes you have to make sacrifices. You might not be able to get that nail done. You may not be able to get that $200 wig. Mm-hmm. You might have to get you a $30 wig and rock that for a minute. So I'm just saying, <laughs> we have to make sacrifices. When I talk to people all the time, even investing and getting their credit fixed, it is a, a, a fee associated with it. And people, well, I don't have the money. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh, you got cable TV? How much are you paying for cable TV. And I heard one, uh, you know, she's a mother. Well, my kids need that. Let me tell you, my daughter's living with me right now with my two-year-old granddaughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Netflix is only $10 a month, okay? <laughs> YouTube has a ton of cartoons, word party, all kinds of education. This two-year-old know all the colors, shapes, and all that from word party. Amen. Amen. <laughs> It's for net Netflix is ten dollars. You can get rid of that hundred dollar a month cable bill. So true. Ask people if you're really broke or you're having 
do you really need to be watching that much TV? This, now, you know what? You're bringing up some good stuff because people don't understand the opportunity cost. So I like how you talk about sacrifice because I go through this with my kids, right? So I'm like, hey, use it or lose it. You know, I'm like, cut it. If it's not making sense, drop it, let it go. Me and my husband battle about this because he's like, well, you know, we do need this. We do need that. And I'm like, no, it costs X. So, hey, let's just cut it out, right? So for people who are on that vein where they're like, you know, hey, I don't understand where we're going or, you know, they feel like they need that immediate gratification. So something that they can start Mm -hmm. doing to kind of scale back and recognize the real situation of what they got going on. What they have going on. So yeah. let's, let's say start off with $50 a pay period. Mm-hmm. You get paid twice a month. That's $100 a month. Mm-hmm. At the end of the year, that's $1,200 that you have for a rainy day. Right. A rainy day. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times people, I, I did a video, a series on uh, Instagram and it was five ways to get money quick, okay? Okay. One way, have a garage sale. Mm-hmm. One man's trash is another man's treasure. treasure. Yeah. And a lot of people are sitting on stuff right now that if they just, you know, made a few signs and advertised in their community paper or maybe had a block, you know, all your neighbors get together, have a garage sale. You'd be surprised. You can make five hundred dollars. That's true. Right, just selling something. Your kids' old toys, old games, old clothes. You know, any purses or whatever you don't want anymore. Hey, why not turn that into cash? So there are all kinds of ways that you can, you know, get get more money or or save more money. But the main thing I talk about is that cable TV because that's not yeah. really a necessity. So true. And so now that we're on this topic, because a lot of people, when they spend money, they don't know the difference between a need or a want or an asset or a liability, you know, that type of word, you know, because it's like, you know, I work every day, so I think I need to have nice things and You know, it's like, you know, how do we get people who are watching to understand that, you know, it's a difference between what you need and what you want and how to, you know, live life comfortably knowing the difference. Knowing the difference. Well, Mm -hmm. you have to decide if you don't have it for six months, will this really affect your lifestyle? Okay. Is it going to take food from your children's mouth? Uh, and if the answer is no, then it's a one. It's not really a need. And you have to train your children because even when I taught high school, I remember a little girl, she was barely passing in my class. I mean, well, the first semester she actually failed. And I, I, I had a first period. And I remember one morning she passed me by coming in that classroom. She had a coach bag that wouldn't wait. You hear me? I had to stop her. I said, wait a minute, young lady, come here. Tell me about this bag. Oh, my mother bought it for me. And I was said to myself, this girl is failing. You know, why are we buying coach bags when your children are failing? A better investment might have been a tutor. Hey. Okay. <laughs> to help tutor her, because I have tutored people. You know, when they do their high school graduation test, uh, the state of Georgia banned it. But that science portion, oh, it was holding a lot of people back. It was one young man, his mother worked with my husband. He had a football scholarship on the line. Mm -hmm. And passing Mm -hmm. his classes wasn't a big deal. He had failed that test twice. And he had to pass that science portion in order to graduate, so he had that football scholarship. His mother invested in me to help him make it through. Mm-hmm. So to me, your children are the, your best investment, mm-hmm. you know, besides yourself. You want to invest in the next generation, but not with material possessions, okay? Especially when your children are failing, failing. 
you reward her with a coach bag when she brings home an A. Amen. You afford it. But when you got a child that's failing and you're going to dress her up real pretty, and what message is that sending to her? Yes. Yes. Now, as far as assets and liabilities, mm -hmm. uh, asset is something that's going to make you money. You're going to earn money from it. Okay. And that's what I tell people, even in getting your credit fixed, once you got a 700 and above credit score, you're going to save money over your whole entire lifetime. Because when you have poor credit, people with poor credit pay more for everything. You can't get a cell phone without a security deposit. You can't turn on your lights or get more, any type of utilities without a security deposit. If your car breaks down and God forbid you got to go buy another car, you're going to pay higher interest rates, depending on what kind of job you got. See, when you go get these jobs, they you give them permission to do a background check. They're not just checking to see if you have a criminal record. They are also checking your credit worthiness. And let's say they have two applicants of equal qualification. Just the fact that this one got a 720 and this one right here got a 520 can be a deciding factor on whether you get the job. Wow. I don't know. Or what, what they pay you. They might be like, hey, we're going to pay them less. Little more. <laughs> right. That's true. You know, they'll take it. <laughs> job promotion. Right. She needs to get her credit fixed. Job promotion. <laughs> Even your insurance. Yeah. Your mm -hmm. insurance premium. You might drive the same kind of car as your next door neighbor. Of course, right. you live in the same zip code. Mm -hmm. but your neighbor might pay $100 less a month than you do. Wow. And you wonder why? Credit. Mm -hmm. So our credit score, you know, when you go to the doctor and they take your blood pressure and your vital sign, you know, your temperature and all that, that's what credit is to your financial heartbeat. Mm -hmm. It's a monitor. That's how people monitor you financially is based on your credit. And a lot of people get these credit cards and they think this is just an opportunity for me to do. No, I got a bunch of credit cards, girl. Let me tell you, I put them up in this little thing right here and this is where they stay. Amen. I, when I travel and I'm, you know, I go to my hometown, I know I'm going to rent a car. Okay, I put this credit card. But in my uh, wallet, <laughs> I got debit cards. I got one credit card I use because I get sky miles. Right. Lines, right. But all, no, it, it mm -hmm. doesn't give you the um, go ahead to go on a shopping spree. Right. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. Because psychologically, they're not paying the money. They're just wiping the car. But then you got to look at the interest rates and all of that kind of stuff, you know, and it eats into your cash flow. So financial literacy and credit is so important. And I use my credit cards for emergency. You are a homeowner. You know, uh, let's see your wash machine go out. You got, uh, you got what, seven children? You well, need yeah, we got 10 of them that are home now. Yeah. <laughs> you need that wash machine. So, hey, I'm telling you, that definitely gets worked over here. Okay. We got like two or three loads a day. So yeah, I feel you on that. So that's what you use your credit cards for mm -hmm. in the case of emergency while you're building up your your you're paying yourself, you're building up your emergency savings. Mm -hmm. And time in between time that that wash machine goes out, you said, okay, I got a credit card. I can go in and get this wash machine. You might be mm -hmm. able to do it the You don't have to finance a wash machine. You know, right. Right. You know your hot yeah. water heater goes out. So you use them for emergencies. I uh, love that. Right. Yeah. Now, so when we do use our credit card, mm -hmm. is what's the best way to handle those payments? Should we pay it off completely or... Well, you know, when it comes to that. Right. It all depends on what you can tolerate. Okay. This okay. Is cool with credit cards. You never want to owe more than 30% of 
of whatever your credit limit is. Let's say okay. you have a $1,000 credit limit on a car. You want to keep that balance as low as possible. Okay. But you definitely, I just tell divided by three, a thousand divided by three is $333. You never want to owe more than that. Ideally, you want to owe less because that's one of the factors in your credit score. You know, paying your bills on time. It's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. It's not rocket science. When you, let's say you have a bill that's due, your credit card or whatever. Okay, it's due on the first, even your car note. Mm -hmm. Now on the 15th, they're going to charge you a late charge. And you really don't want to pay that because it eats into your cash flow. But it's not until it's 30 days late that they're going to report it to the credit. And I tell people, you move heaven and earth and pay that bill on time. I don't care if you got to sacrifice that week and eat beans until you get paid. You don't want that 30 day late to show up on your credit report because it drops your score and it affects you for a whole 24 months. So isn't it better just to sacrifice for a week than 24 months of I... having a ding on your credit? So it's about, you know, making sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And now that we're in, um, you know, this pandemic and COVID, a lot of people ought to be saving a lot of money. But, you know, a lot of people are stressed. I saw on the, one thing on Facebook, a lady was saying after this, we come out of this, I'm going to have to go to Weight Watchers and Alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I lost my mom in April. So I sorry to hear that. Yeah. 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 It was in the middle of COVID. She didn't die of COVID, but it was very stressful. So don't get me wrong. I didn't, I didn't put back a, a bottle of wine in two days. <laughs> yeah, know? I know that's right. So, I mean, you know, you want to do everything in moderation, but you yes. want to pay your bills on time. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. I mean, you. You have given us some great insight because I think a lot of times it's not that we're not going to have these issues, but we still need to have the right strategies to overcome them. Overcome. You know, you can't be sitting here going to a foot doctor when you need a neurosurgeon. You know what I'm saying? And this is, you know, we kind of talk amongst each other, but we're dealing with a lot of people that don't have the wisdom about their finances and so we just make a problem worse yeah. instead of going to an expert or somebody that can give us some you insight right, on right. how we can move forward now so a lot of people deal with you know self-esteem issues a lot of these uh mindset you know uh voices things going on with them mm -hmm. that kind of spark them to make certain purchases so you know just as you mentioned I talk to my kids about this. Hey, I don't care about a name brand purse if I don't have any money inside. I mean, that just doesn't make sense to me. You know, you can look good or a nice car, but I can't afford premium gas, right? So for people who are watching, what are some things that we could advise them on about getting out of that feeling of thinking that it matters to other people that they have certain things. Right, well, um, self-image, um, self-esteem starts with self. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I heard someone defi uh, define what status is. And okay. they said status is buying things that you can't afford, uh, you know, to impress people that you don't even like. So I you trying to impress at the end of the day the only people you really need to be trying to impress is your family your children you want them to have a good lifestyle you want to impress your husband of course so outside of that circle we need to not be so concerned about what people say and and i get that i, I grew up my grandmother was one that always worried about what people say what people say the thing with what people say is if you fall on hard times and you call any one of them people that you worried about what they say, 
and tell them they're not going to, what are they going to do? So why is their opinion so important to you? Okay. Are they going to help put your kids through college? Are they going to help? No. So who cares what they say? You know, you have to learn how to be a, a, a independent thinker that comes from within. But let's say you do work on a job and everybody dressed nice and nice suits. You know what? They got consignment shops out here. Amen. Goodwill. Thrift stores. You hear me? I am at the Goodwill, okay? Look at this cake from the business. You know what I'm saying? This shirt, okay. And, you know, and people don't know. Right. And I remember, you know, uh, when I taught high school, I uh, sent my kids to school in North Fulton County. I just mm-hmm. wanted a little more diversity. Mm-hmm. And the scores were higher. And that was the sacrifice. Honey, they got a big old Goodwill up there. So it's in all areas, right. you know? And I saw those women in there with big old diamonds on. They had this, you know, the Goodwill, the consignment shop, yes. the stores, and they in there buying whatever. You exactly. Know? And a lot of that stuff is brand new it when it comes to the clothing tags still on it, you know? Um, I went through that with my daughter because, you know, we always, I, I'm a thrifter. I was an only child and still just, you know, couldn't spend top dollar for some name brand stuff, always thinking of how I could save money. So one of my daughters was like, you know, I just like only the name brand stuff and I just don't want to go to Goodwill because what if I see somebody and we're like, if you see somebody, that means they shop in there too. And she just went one time and she has always been back, you know, because she's able to find whatever name brand that she likes. And it's like, the only thing you have to do is wash the stuff and keep it moving. I mean, why are you going to spend, you know, $30 for something when you can get it for $4 somewhere else? That don't make sense to me. And even uh, household furnishings. Right. You, know, you can get nice things for the house. Yes. Out of the, the Goodwill. So mm-hmm. It's the same as you buying it from a garage sale. So true. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's the same premise. And then they have consignment shops. It's yeah. to go to. It's called Finders Keepers. Now, I've I mean, heard of that. Right. That's not like the Stone Mountain, not Stone Mountain, but it's the Cab County. What they call it? Uh, Avalon, Avalon Estates. I and, think I might have been there before. They, uh, I can't think of where it's at though. Yeah, yeah. But I think they, they have more than one location. They do. They do. Okay, have yeah. The one I used mm-hmm. to go to, and they have really nice, and they have designer stuff. Designer, oh, yeah. In the labels and all of that. Mm-hmm. Kind of stuff. So they do have consignment shops because those people that own that stuff realized it wasn't a big deal, and they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> they had their reasons for getting rid of it exactly and then, and then you gotta realize less is more amen because i my mother was a um what can i, I don't want to call her a pet rat pet rat but i mean i looked at Look, she sounds like me okay <laughs> <laughs> and, you know before she passed away me and my sister was going there trying to get rid of i went over every uh, jeans and it's okay mom you want this okay now we're gonna let that go so i had a big old bag garbage she saw that big old bag. oh no we're going to that stuff again i said oh no we're not <laughs> i went through everything with you you told me what you wanted what you did a lot of people have uh, is a separation anxiety i don't know what it is people have a problem <laughs> with letting go but i heard a lady say one time before I bring something new in my house, something else has to go. To go. This is true. You, know, you see people, you go in their house, they got something on every wall. <laughs> every <laughs> a wall in their house. And I'm like, this is, and my daughter taught me, she said, mommy, less is more. So true. I like that. I like that. Now, if you look at the decorating books, you don't have to junk up your house with stuff to so make true. Feel good about yourself yeah mm-hmm. we have to change a lot of it comes from our mindset a yeah. lot of it comes from the way people were raised maybe they were raised in poverty you know mm-hmm. and they, um 
having things make them feel good about themselves. But you got to get to the root of that. Right. And find out what it, what is your trick. Mm-hmm. Some people are shopaholics. Yeah. You no, know, they trade in one addiction for another. They might have mm-hmm. been addicted to drugs or alcohol. Now they're addicted to shop. So true. So yeah, right. But when you at the thrift store and everything costs two dollars, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. right? Yeah, or they have a special everything in the bag for one price. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty dollars goes along. <laughs> so I wouldn't say to deprive yourself because if you right. want to, you want to reward yourself. I'm gonna tell you another thing. This is something I found out as a young woman. Okay. I worked at Amico. I was married then, mm-hmm. and that's when the American Express was what you had to pay it all. And- oh yeah, thirty day. Yeah, when and that's when they gave you the physical receipt. You know, you get your oh. little receipt. Mm-hmm. I understand for the life of me why is my American Express bill so high mm-hmm. one day that envelope came it was kind of thick I said, oh, baby I was eating out every day Wow! I worked in corporate America I worked at an oil company in Houston and honey we were going out and we were swiping our American Express card and then I get a bill at the end of the month, like $300. I'm like, what the hell? I knew I didn't buy nothing. <laughs> with eating out. Yeah. Working, sometimes you got to carry your lunch. And I did that as a teacher. Yeah. You know, you have a lot of time. Sometimes that cafeteria food at whatever school you work at is mm-hmm. not the best. Mm-hmm. And I just learned to prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Just put your little stuff to the side. Have your little pouch. Mm-hmm. or lunch bag or whatever mm-hmm. carry your lunch eating out is one of the the wealth stealers okay yes. and they are wealth robbers they are robbers mm-hmm. to your wealth mm-hmm. one of them is taxes it's hard to kind of get around taxes yeah right? you, know, you add the lawn tax on your car you say mm-hmm. you gotta pay mm-hmm. for you know taxes um and I'll talk about that. A business owner, being a business owner will reduce your tax because as a business owner, you can write things off that a W-2 wage earner cannot. Perfect example is our president. People mad because they found out he didn't pay them. He's a businessman. He knew how to write off stuff that reduced his tax liability. And the way that works, let's say if you make $50,000 a year on your job, you're going to pay taxes on whatever 50000 is. Let's say if you had a home-based business and you tallied up all the things you could, your cell phone, your office, your mileage, you get 57.5 cents a mile. So let's say you tallied up all of that. Let's say you didn't really make a profit your first year. They'll give you, RS give you three years to make a profit. Then after that, you're not in business. It's a hobby. Right. I have a doctor friend of mine every three years. She, she's in a new business. She's a doctor. <laughs> she makes $300,000 a year and she is not giving Uncle Sam all of her tax, you know. So every three years, she got another business and she's writing off stuff. So let's say you make 50, let's say your expenses are, let's say $5,000. Well, you deduct that. Now you only pay taxes on 45,000 instead of 50. So that's how having a home-based business, even, you know, from just making money, it'll help you on your tax liability. So taxes is one thing that eats uh, away at our wealth. And Mm -hmm. uh, another one, I call it the the big business uh, retail calendar. So they they got something for you to buy all the time. But what is this? what is this? October. Mm-hmm. So we're coming up on Halloween. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, Halloween, trick or treat, candy. You know, you got to buy costumes if you got, you know, you got kids. Mm-hmm. You got to do all that for trick or treat. Then after that, what we got? Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Now it's time for the grocery stores to get all their money. You know, mm-hmm. you got to buy turkey and ham and this and that. Mm-hmm. Then after Thanksgiving is what? Christmas. <laughs> You know how they get you on Christmas, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Mm-hmm. 
and they want you to be a willing participant. Okay. Right. So January came, you got New Year's. What comes in? Nothing comes in January, but February, you got Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. I mean, that man better not walk in the house without some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Night down or something. You got President's Day. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've seen them even trying to make money. Oh, Martin Luther, you know, Martin Luther's birthday is in January. Right. We got a Martin Luther King. Damn, come on down here and get this TV. Okay. Exactly. Something every single month. You got President. Yeah. Then March, what you got? Spring break. You Spring got break. Easter. Yeah. You know, uh, April. You know, they're going to figure out something. Then May is Mother's <laughs> Day. Graduations. <laughs> You right, know, Father's Day, Father's yeah, Day, then it's Fourth of July, and then August back to school. Back to school, yeah. I saying, know all about that. <laughs> they keep you big businesses. They set up a calendar mm -hmm. that keeps you a consumer, mm -hmm. buying stuff you can't afford. Mm -hmm. These people you don't like or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. have to be um, just mindful of things that, you know, eat away at your finances and just I be very that. guarded. Yeah. And mm -hmm. try to go. You know, my husband used to have that problem. He has a stroke now, so I mm -hmm. can kind of, what I said, just walk around. Some people, as soon as they get a dollar, they think they got to <laughs> spend it. I, See yeah. how many days you can walk around with that same hundred dollars in your wallet and don't spend it. Yeah. And and what do we talk about? Um, how money stays in certain communities. Right. The Jewish community, how the money mm -hmm. circulates so many days before it leaves. You know, other mm -hmm. communities. In the African American community, it don't circulate a whole day. Mm -hmm. We run in here, we run into the nail shop to get them some money. We run it over here. To give the, the you know we want to eat out at the Mexican restaurant, drink margaritas. They got our money. Just see how long you can walk around with your money in your pocket. Oh my God, I went a whole week and I didn't buy nothing. Amen. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. so we just have to uh, change our mindset. And now with this whole Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. this whole um. This George Floyd and just all this blatant racism in this country, I'm very careful who I spend my dollars with. Mm -hmm. Very, very careful. Mm -hmm. You know, I have two companies when all that was going on that I buy from that reached out to me in an email. We support Black Lives. We denounce racism. One company altered, they even showed me these are the black vendors. The wow. black who have cosmetic and hair care products. Another company. We, but if I didn't get a letter from you, they say this one going bankrupt and that one going bankrupt. This one going out of business. They can all go out of business. <laughs> we got to be careful who we spend our money with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful. I mean, I pointed out some companies. People we do business with every day. I'm not trying to get political, but right. they don't support my candidate. So why would I give you a penny? Mm -hmm. A penny. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's be mindful who we spending our money with and find out what are their values. Right. We might be paying the same people that hate us or or, or, or perpetuating racism against us. So true. We don't know. And a lot of those companies know. This is mm -hmm. what we know about black people. This is mm -hmm. something we don't realize. Right. We have a trillion dollars in spending power. Wow. And their job is to make their commercial. You know, McDonald's, they always got somebody laughing and singing and, you know, doing all that. What is it? What? Get low, low, low. low. Yeah. <laughs> something that appeals to us to right. make go buy their product. And they not it right. See, they like our dollars. They might not like right. it. And they know we are the biggest consumers and we have the least amount of wealth. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That when you understand that, when you really mm -hmm. understand that, saving your money, paying yourself first, getting some life insurance to protect your family and doing the other thing, it'll become easy. Because you realize these people really don't care about you. They don't care about your family. They want your money. Mm -hmm. And they know you are a consumer. They got to have Jordans and got to have all of this material things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Get, an asset. Get you some property, some rental mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. Live in the house. Mm -hmm. You know? So all of those things, we as a community got to come together and, and figure things out. Right. The whole subprime industry. It's a lot of people that don't want you to get good credit. Right. So if you have bad credit, you don't have a bank account because the bank won't give it to you. Right. What you do when you get paid, you got to go to the check cash and pay. Pay you more. Pay them a fee to cash your checks. Mm -hmm. so they're smiling because they give it, they charge you to right. get your own money. Then you don't have checks to pay your bill. They're mm -hmm. going to charge you 50 cent a dollar per money order mm -hmm. because that's how you have to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of industries out there that don't, they, the subprime industry is a trillion dollar industry. Check cash in place, extended stay motels. Because I've talked to people. I talked to a guy, he had a job. His credit was so bad, he could not get an apartment. He stayed in an extended stay hotel until a few days before it was time to get paid. He ran out of money. He slept in his car and he had a job. So these are ways that people, you know, these are industries that are set up, the title pawn places. Right. Pawn shops and all of that. Okay. They'll loan you money, but it's loan shark rate, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And these are always people that have bad credit mm -hmm. and they know it. And they, that that's a subprime industry and it's a trillion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. So we just have to be mindful of it. We got to make sacrifices. And we got to show our children. Mm -hmm. We have to show our children. I'm, I met a lady over at Walmart in Union City. Mm -hmm. You know, people come to you with, and I have a soft heart. And she was staying in the extended stay hotel. She showed me. I said, well, I'm going to give you the money. I'll go over there and pay them. And I did. Mm -hmm. I went over there and I said, listen, I want to pay this lady for a night or whatever. And the man knew who I was talking about. Mm -hmm. What really hurt me, I saw families over there. I saw women and children living out of a hotel room because evidently they lost their apartments. I remember in 2008 when the housing market went bust and I lost my house don't get me wrong I just we could afford to get at least so Lord please don't let me have to move into an apartment I found a, a nice town home you know right move, you know and we stayed there for three years that's when I learned the principles of credit and how to get it together my credit was bad my husband had no credit I didn't realize no credit it's like bad credit and uh, more just later said, I said, well, he don't have nothing. He, we make him money. He don't. She said, no, you need to show that he's paying somebody every month. So we had to go and get his credit together. And we bought this house in 2011, you know, with the knowledge that we had. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know either. Yeah. So just thinking during 2008, it was the same thing. I used to see school buses stop at these extended state motels to pick up 10 school children and take them to school because these people had lost their homes. So it's not, um, you know, that happens to people. It's not the end of the world, but you got to figure out how, first of all, to pull yourself out of it. That's number one. And then not repeat that same pattern again because your yeah. children are watching you. A lot of times they don't go by what you say. They go by what you do what you showed them okay and it really hurt my heart to go over there and just see families that were living in this extended stay hotel but that's the reality and i'm talking about this is just like a month ago yeah. yeah 
yeah. So it's, it's work to be done. It's, it's yeah. work to be done in our community. And, um, you know, cigarettes. How much do cigarettes cost these days? I have no, praise the Lord, I never had that thing. Oh, my mother smoked. You know, when I was growing up, you you know, that's back when you could send your kids across the street, you know, put 50 cents in the machine to get cigarettes. Right. I was telling somebody about cigarettes. It was like five hours. Yes. It was a pack. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And just you smoking two, three, four packs a week. So true. That's eating, right. That's eating into your cash flow. Yes. So we just need to be mindful of every, everything that we spend our money on. Mm-hmm. Just, I'm not saying you deprive yourself. But right. just make sure. It's going in the right place. Yeah. So good. The, the, I mean, you have given us some great insight because I think that, uh, you know, it's a conversation that we need to have. We have that taboo about money. Everybody wants to pretend we have money, you know, which is how we dress ourselves up. And, you know, we get these vehicles so that people just, it's kind of like a diversion. People don't have the money conversation because they're like, oh, well, they're driving that car and they have on those clothes. So they must know about money. And it's something that you continue to perpetuate these cycles. So I love the insight that you've been able to give us. So what is the best way for the audience to get a hold of you? Well, um, I'm on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bonita, B-O-N-I-T-A, Lynn, Mm -hmm. L-Y-N-N. White, W-H-I-T-E. Um, you can reach out to me, um, Bonita, at BonitaWhite.com. That's my email. And uh, I will send you a little something. I do a 15-minute um, strategy session with people just to find okay. out. What they are. Yeah, it's usually for the credit. But uh, let me just say that our the, the program that we have, we leave with credit because that's what most people are. But we do have a budgeting tool. I told you, you have to tell your money where to go. We do have a debt payoff tool. Okay. A lot of people don't really know how to pay off their debt. Okay. So it's a debt payoff tool. You put all your debts, all your interest rates. It will calculate and show you what you need to pay off first. Okay. We have a... Um, credit monitoring. You want to monitor your credit. You want to know at all times where your credit is. We have identity theft protection. See, once you get your good name, now you got good credit. Now you got to protect yourself. People will try to go out and get stuff in your name. And I have it where if anybody opened up an account, I get an alert on my phone. Okay. That thing down from the phone. So it's a, a different services that we offer network everybody know how much jay-z and beyonce is worth but how much are you worth Mm -hmm. so it's a a network calculator Uh, all of this is included for one low investment uh monthly investment um a will a trust excuse me a medical financial power of attorney it broke my heart when i saw chadwick bozeman Mm -hmm. his wife is going to the court now because he didn't have a will. And it's a long yeah, you know, Prince didn't have a will. Aretha Franklin didn't have a will. You don't want the state deciding who, who, where your assets are going to go. Mm-hmm. And then you need beneficiaries. And this, a lot, um, a lot of Black people don't know. A lot of people in general don't know this. When my mother died, and I didn't fight with her, but she didn't understand One day I let the lady at the bank tell me, just like you have beneficiaries on life insurance, Mm -hmm. you need beneficiaries on any money you got in a bank account. That's not included in program. If somebody in your family died and they got $10,000, $20,000 in the bank account and there's no beneficiary, beneficiaries just pay on debt. All you have to do is walk in there with a death certificate, and your driver's license, and they're going to give you that money. And I have one lady that's in our company. This lady is very well established, an engineer. Mm-hmm. And when her mother died, she didn't realize that that will, you can have a will cover your bank account, but the way that works, whoever you owe, 
They get first dibs at that money first, your creditors. So if there's anything you want your family to have, a simple form, beneficiary. We need to start having life insurance. We should on our kids, you know, people, uh, young people got a cash in their 401k to bury their parents or their right. if they didn't. You know, you don't have to have a lot of money, but at least right. have something that will cover your burial expenses. Mm-hmm. It should not be on your family. Yeah. So these are these are things that are also included in the platform. Yeah. That is so awesome. Well, we just really want to thank you, Miss Bonita, for that insight. And I encourage everybody who's watching to reach out to her. Like she said, she's going to have that 15 minute strategy session. You know, some of us need longer than 15 minutes. <laughs> but hey, you got to start somewhere. It's baby steps. So uh, a great wealth of knowledge. So I encourage you guys to reach out to her and We want to thank you all for watching and we will see you all the next time. Have a great one. All right. Thank you. You all make it a great day. All right.